One of the most common questions that Darren and I get is, what are you guys doing on your farm? Let's talk about fertility today. Well, you know, there are so many things going on on the farm, a lot of decisions to make, and what we do on our farm may not be exactly what you want to do on yours. Now, you may say, well, wait a minute, I farm right across the road from you. Well, that may be a different story. You probably can yeah, do exactly but, what we're doing. But the thing is, we do lots of different experiments. We're trying new products, and we like to try things in big blocks. So, for example, with agriculture liquid fertilizer, Darren's using a complete program of that on some of his ground, and we're using other things to compare against that so we have some long-term comparisons. So then later, when you ask us a question, and say, yeah, what do you guys think of this or that? We can say, well, we really like it, and here's the reason why we've got data to back it up. Well, when it comes to our fertility program, there are a lot of different things we try. And let's just look at nitrogen, for example. We get a lot of questions. Well, what kind of nitrogen do you like the best? Do you like liquid 28% or 32%? Would you prefer urea? Do you like anhydrous? Where do you go from there? Well, actually, we will probably use some of each on our farm this year. Now, there are different reasons for why we're doing that. Some of it may be, well, we're doing a totally addressable dry program on one particular farm where we're using dry P and K, we're using dry uh, forms of nitrogen uh, because we're going to broadcast spread and work it in and that kind of thing. Others like on my farm for example I like to put liquid on. I like to put it on with my pre-emerge products in the spring. That works out nice for me. It saves a trip over the field. There are a lot of advantages going that way. On other farms we may use some anhydrous. There are just many different forms of nitrogen out there. We don't necessarily have a favorite. I guess I prefer the liquid form the most just because it's the easiest to handle for what I'm doing. But we use all three effectively. Yeah and the price really varies from year to year. So in a year where anhydrous is significantly less expensive than liquid or dry nitrogen, we might go to more anhydrous in that particular year. We're set up so we can apply all three things ourselves on our farm, depending on what the year brings. Now, when it comes to phosphorus, uh, as Brian mentioned, I'm using the agricultural liquid program. I like Pro Germinator. It's worked great for me on my farm. I can do all my liquid at spring in the furrow at planting time. Well, that works fantastic on my corn. And again, I save a trip over the field. I like that. Now, in other fields that we have, we may use some dry fertilizer. A lot of the dry phosphorus we're using is MAP. Well, for example, if we're doing strip till, so we have some of our ground we're strip till, other ground we're broadcasting, other ground we're putting manure on, so then we aren't using as much of a conventional or, or commercial fertilizer program. So all these different things we might be doing, and in that strip till, yes, in the past, we've been using a lot of dry that's gone down in the strip till. We've really liked liked strip-till as compared to broadcast fertilizer because we're able to use a lower rate and get a better result. When we're looking at potassium sources, a lot of times we'll end up doing the fall strip-till approach that way too. So we look at what our removal is, how much our crop is going to remove from the soil, and try to put on at least that much rate, if not a little bit more. Now Brian likes to use potash, but I have no interest in potash at all. I'm using Sure-K liquid at planting time in the furrow. Now, there are other forms of potassium as well. Potassium sulfate is probably the preferred form. The problem with potassium sulfate is it's often a lot more expensive than what using potash is, which is potassium chloride. Now, the downside of that potassium chloride is you're putting all that chloride salt out on your ground, which I just refuse to do. Okay, I briefly mentioned manure. We do use some manure on our farm. We love manure. I'd like to get it on more acres, and that's what we try to do. We try cutting the rate down so we can get the manure across more acres, and we'll supplement it with different forms of commercial fertilizer. So I do think that's important. And finally, we can never ever forget about things like sulfur and micronutrients. You've got to have ample sulfur and micronutrients. It doesn't cost that much money to get those things out there, but without them, you're not going to get a good crop. So almost every acre we have every year, we're putting on micronutrients and we're putting on sulfur. And I guess one last, I, I forgot there's one other thing I should mention. We're fertilizing every single acre we've got every year. In other words, I don't care if it's corn, it's wheat, it's soybeans, any crop we're going to raise, it's getting fertilizer every year. The biggest problem we see with overall fertility programs in the United States is farmers think they're applying excess fertilizer one year and then they can get by the next year without. Maybe you can, but a lot of times what we find is guys are not applying enough fertilizer. And if you don't feed the plant, you can't expect great yields. Well, Brian mentioned sulfur and micronutrients. We are using some microessentials on our farm, and that's performed very well. We're and also TGM using Micromix. And we're using other forms of sulfur as well, like access, for example, on our farm too. Well, whatever you decide for a fertility program on your farm, we would suggest at least you do a little bit what we're doing, which is 
try some different things. Try some new things. Try some new technologies. Maybe some products that are a little more available, more advanced than what you used to have. Because there are a lot of different ways to do fertilizer. And all I know is if you do a good job with that fertility program, you can expect higher yields. Well, you won't get higher yields, Brandon, unless you control our weed of the week. So we'll show you how to do it coming up next.